So, so this is going to be a very short talk. Um, there had been a call for a favorite coin uh, to be discussed within five minutes. So this is one of those. In numismatics, sometimes a minting error teaches us much more than a perfectly struck coin. And here is exactly such an instance. It may not be obvious to look at it, but closer inspection reveals that this is a Gadia Paisa, as collectors call it, a Billa Maladrama, issued in the 9th to 11th century. Here's a full specimen for comparison. You can see that there's the residual uh, face on the obverse and a residual fire altar with attendance of the reverse. When you put the two side by side, you'll see that our mystery coin has the obverse, uh, excuse me, the reverse of the original, but the obverse is missing altogether. In its place are ridged striations. So on the bottom, you have the reverse of the two and you can see the similarities. On the top, you see that the obverse is missing and you've got these striations which are raised. So my interpretation is that the coin blank shown here as a little white squidget was struck by a handheld trussel die while sitting on a rough stone anvil. The accident reveals that the trussel or upper die bore the reverse design. The other side bore whatever was the random um, surface of the, the anvil itself. This fact is tremendously significant and will be recognized by a lot of people for it demonstrates that in the 10th century Gujarat, the ancient Hellenic minting techniques were still in use. It's well known that die engravers in the Hellenic tradition expended much more effort on the obverse dies, which often bore royal portraits. This is evident in this Indo-Greek tetradram where the quality of the obverse portrait is superior to the reverse design. Note as well in the center there, the extraordinarily high relief shown here in profile. You can actually see the cap and forehead in profile. The engravers obviously discovered early on that lower anvil dies had a much longer operational life than upper trussel dies. This was due to the cushioning effect of the malleable coin flan which protected the lower die from the shock caused by the hammer striking the upper die. So quite sensibly, they invariably placed the obverse on the lower or anvil die. You can see that here, the battery and tetradrams of the Kunduz hoard show that in total, only 251 obverse dies were paired with the 405 reverse dies. You also notice that for each of the kings that were sampled, the same is true. The obverse dies are far fewer than the reverse dies. This is prima facie evidence that the obverse was the lower protected die. Likewise, in the prolific mintage of the Western Shatrapa silver dramas in Gujarat in the second to fourth centuries, a small percentage of the surviving coins are obverse brockages. You can see here the obverse in relief, and on the other side, the reverse is a mirror image, but in cuse. These brockages are always obverse. I've never ever seen a reverse. This in turn demonstrates that the minters in this region, in this period, followed the Hellenic convention of making the obverse portrait die the lower one and the reverse die the upper one. Brockages were unintentionally created when a struck coin stuck in the upper reverse die and was used in the striking of the next blank flan, which was placed on the lower obverse die. So in conclusion, although we've never found a brockage in the Indo-Sassanian series, in my view, this lone error coin reveals that in India, at least, even at this late date, not only the technology of minting but the techniques of minting had successfully been transmitted from the ancient world into the medieval one. Thank you.